I don't know if you know this, Dan, but you're leading the country in offensive rebounding, 16 a game. Is offensive rebounding something that you can coach, or is that, is that just an instinct thing for the kids you get? Yeah, I guess, you know, we, we get a lot of practice. We, you know, we miss a lot. So uh, these guys get a lot of practice uh, <laughs> ch chasing their re – no, yeah, I mean, like, listen, um, you know, defense and rebounding are things you could control. Um, you know, I think they're, they're, uh, they're things that if, you, uh, if you're consistent with those things, night in and night out, then, uh, you know, you'll, uh, you'll be in every game. So uh, what we've got, I think, uh, you know, any time that you have a guy, you know, rebounds a ball like Isaiah, um, you know, and then you have a perimeter rebounder like Tyrese, uh, you know, and, and, and James is a really good offensive rebounder too. So, uh, you know, defensive rebounding wins, especially on the road. Gavin? Dan, it's been a while, obviously, since you guys have gone on the road. What's it kind of like leaving this Lord's battle and kind of getting on the road again? Yeah, it, 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 it was, uh, it's been a while. It's been a while. It was, uh, it was just nice to to uh, you know pull into a pull into a city and and uh, you know get out on the road together as a group you know get on a plane and and uh, you know, I think it's gonna be really good for uh, you know for just the chemistry and uh, and I think the mental you know the mental state of the group too it's like uh, you know we played a game the other day we're you know we're we're getting another game today we look like we got a you know, a series of games coming up and hopefully practices and we just get some consistency in the season. Dave? Thanks. Dan, is, is there anything um, you guys will do differently on this road trip as, in terms of from what you've done in the past? It's, I know you don't, the guys aren't like, like going out to dinner or stuff like that very often anyway. I mean, is it just a matter of kind of hotel, shoot around tomorrow, game? Is that, is that pretty much it? Yeah, I mean, we, we like to get in. Um, I think I think a lot of it is the same. Just the the you know the distance. Uh, just trying to stay you know distance during meals and during different uh, you know during different parts of the actual uh, transportation part here. Um, you know, taking the precaution of having you know two buses uh, you know just in case and. and uh, <clears throat> you know, we we, uh, we traditionally like to get into town a little bit earlier and get shots up in the arena the night before the game and then get the shoot around. So give our guys two chances to get comfortable in the space. So just to, um, you know, to eliminate some risk, we, uh, we've we eliminated the shooting the night before. Mike, never Hey, coach. Uh, do you have a, a status update on a Coco Cook at all? Yeah, he, uh, you know, he's getting, you know, I think he's, you know, he's just, he's getting closer. Um, you know, he's, he's looking good. Um, it's hard to give a timeline, but, you know, he's, uh, you know, just, because I don't want to put myself out there, but, he, you know, he's, he's getting, you know, he's definitely getting closer. He looks good. Neil, Astro? Yeah, to kind of follow up, I mean, it's a good problem to have, but how, how and kind of where does a cook kind of fit in? Obviously, I mean, such a force defensively and, you know, I'm sure, you know, improved offense uh, in the offseason. Where have you given a lot of thought to kind of where he fits in and, you know, uh, the, the rotation problems, I guess, good problems that it's going to cause? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, we want him back as soon as uh... – as soon as he's ready, you know, physically, mentally, uh, you know, where he's ready to, to uh, you know, come in and help us in, uh, you know, in, in, in very intense conference games. Uh, you know, this isn't, um, you know, this isn't like, there's no get well games in this league where you could bring a guy in and, you know, let him get his feet wet versus uh, – a bottom feeder in the league or a low major buy game to try to get right. So, um, you know, I, I would just say, you know, he's, uh, you know, Cook is close. Um, you know, he's looking good in practice. And, and when, when, you know, when, when, uh, when he's at the point where, um, 
where he looks game ready, like Big East game ready, he'll uh, he'll be in. Tom? Yeah, Dan, uh, Marquette's played, I guess, 11 games, so they've been able to get a lot of games in, you know, a few games in in the conference. Uh, they're, they're kind of transitioning to life after after Marcus Howard. What what do you see in from them in terms of their strengths? And a really good balance. You know, just a really, really good, you know, balanced team. You know, get, uh, you know, let's see, uh, you know, DJ gives them like a really, really high level talent on the ball. Uh, you know, Kane and, uh, and McEwen get uh, you know, some really, really strong, uh, you know, wing play. Um, and then uh, obviously they throw it in a lot. You know, they've got, uh, you know, they rotate the three, fours and fives in. Um, and they throw the ball inside. Uh, they're just, they, they've got really, really good balance. They're, you know, really, really well coached, sound on defense. Um, that probably, you know, where, where we may have an advantage may be, you know, in, 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 in the depth uh, if the game comes down to that. But, you know, they just look like a, you know, really well rounded, well coached uh, team. Sean? Coach, Happy New Year. Uh, can you just Happy talk to being, uh, you know, just fired up uh, to, to get a few games now that uh, it looks like, you know, we're, we're going to be playing? Uh, just, you know, the, the feel of, of, of being able to get back out there knowing, hey, you know, we do the right things, everybody does the right things, we're going to be continuing uh, to, to play. Um, you're, you're a guy that gets everybody fired up. Put a perspective on that for me. Yeah, it's, uh, it's awesome to be able to uh... – you know, to be in a position to, uh, you know, to play these games, uh, you know, obviously safely. And, uh, but, you know, for us, it's, um, this is the best, you know, we felt in a while, you know, really since Mohegan, you know, after the USC game, preparing for that NC State game and, and like really feeling like you're, you have a season going. Um, this is the closest we felt since then. Uh, just having obviously gotten that, the Paul game in a couple of days of practice on to the next Big East, first Big East road game. Um, you know, we, we, there's, there's a lot of joy and excitement in the group. Uh, you know, getting a chance to, to do this right now. After Dave? Yeah, Dan, I don't know how much you pay attention to the uh, NCAA's net rankings, uh, especially this early in the season, uh, especially since you've only played five games, but I guess, and I know you've kind of answered this a similar question to this before, but given how that formula like really stresses uh, road games and the ability, the ability to play well on the road or away from home, and, and the fact that there doesn't seem to be a whole, you know, big home court advantage this season because of the lack of fans. I mean, is that is that render the rankings a little more, uh, a little less? I don't know, a little less to it this year, I guess. I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'd say you know I, I think coaches, you know, this time of year we're so uh, we're just trying to you know, um, make sure that we're on the right path with our team, establishing roles, uh, the way that we want to play it, um, the best course of action moving forward as a team in terms of giving ourselves the best chance to have a really good season. So I think like we probably you know what what. When we're deeper in the season, like we do have some of those discussions about some of the metrics and Ken Palm and Mets and all this stuff. But, you know, we're, we're I'm, I'm probably not as familiar with Dave just because it's so early in the season. Um, and, and for us, it's just, you know, obviously our mission is to play in March. Uh, and the way that we look at, you know, game for us like tomorrow is, you know, I think, uh, you know, what I've told the team is uh, if you want to play at the, at the top of the league, if you want to, play at the tippy top of this league and um you know then then obviously you you've got to um you know you, you've got to win games like tomorrow um you know Seton Hall and and and, and uh you know he's playing at the top of the league and you know they're obviously winning on the road so you want to play at the tippy top of this conference we've got to win on the road and uh um whether that helps our net or not we just want to win on the road. Gavin? 
Isaiah's been uh, in some foul trouble the last few games. What do you kind of need from him? Uh, to, you know, what does he need to do better? I think he's effective. I mean, I think, you know, I, I see several players that have been affected by the no crowd. Uh, you know, energy, energy players, players that feed off the crowd. You know, usually my teams feed off the crowd because of, you know, we, we play with a lot of passion and emotion. But, like, you know, I see it with my brother's team. I see it with Remy Martin. I see it with, you know, with with, uh, with my old school with, with Fats, and I see it with a guy like Isaiah, who, uh, um, you know, who feeds so much off of the home crowd, the road crowd, and it raises their level because they're high energy guys. I think it's hurt. Um, I think it's hurt Isaiah a little bit. Uh, so we've, uh, you know, so I've tried to stir up the passion and emotion in him. Uh, you know, by trying to get him back to his roots a little bit, just more more active, more energy, more more intensity, obviously less fouling, but, you know, just all over the backboard, contesting everything defensively, uh, you know, finishing big at the rim. So, uh, yeah. Isaiah's a critical guy. We need him. You know, his, his last two games, uh, uh, you know, haven't been, uh, you know, what we need from him. So he, he's got to be better. We need double figure points and close to double figure rebounds from him and, and, and rim protection. And obviously the ball screen defense, which is elite at. Jeff Jacobs. Hey, Dan, uh, happy, happy new year. Uh, I happy just new year, man. follow up on the uh, Isaiah Whaley. I'm sure after the last two games, you've analyzed the type of fouls he's taken. And I was just wondering if you kind of expand on, you know, what you thought that he didn't do wrong, they might have got a, you know, a iffy call against it, and what he definitely <laughs> did wrong in Fallon. Yeah. No, I think, you know, Isaiah's got such great timing, and he's so good at protecting the rim that I think, um, you know, he's gotten a little, you know, I think he got a little bit lazy with his pre-catch, like post-defense, uh, like his pre-catch defense when guarding his man. Uh, I think he allowed him, he's allowed him to post too easy, and it's it put him in a – in a bad spot, particularly against Creighton. Um, you know, he committed the bad, you know, just a, you know, kind of a bad, um, a bad senior moment, uh, you know, foul uh, early in the second half versus Creighton when we had a lot of momentum, we were playing well, which put him back on the bench. I would just, you know, for him, it's, um, you know, you raise the bar uh, because you make yourself so valuable and so productive. Um, and that now we, you know, that now we, we've got to deliver. Uh, you know, he's got to deliver in, uh, you know, in a, in a big year in his in his career. Roger Cleveland. Dan, there's been a lot of inconsistency on the team so far individually outside of book night. Do you see anybody coming on a little bit now that you've had some consistent practices and and a few games? Yeah, I mean, we, we've. Um, Obviously, uh, you know, seeing Tyrese, you know, it's a big game for Tyrese. Um, you know, I don't want to be a one-hit wonder. You know, you, you want to show consistency and, and uh, you know, become a reliable double-figure scorer and a, and, and a lockdown defender and a guy that just, you know, eats glass. Uh, so it's a big game for Tyrese to prove that it, at this level he could do it back-to-back -back nights in the Big East. Um, you know, RJ, I think, you know, I'm, I'm feeling like, you know, uh, you know, we just, we got to get RJ. He's got to have that, you know, that, that seven for 12, 18 points, six assists game or that 20, you know, I think, uh, I think he's, he's more aggressive. He's being more, more, he's, he's attacking. He's being more assertive in practice. Um, you know, he's trying more. He's just, you know, we need him to, uh, you know, to, uh, to, 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 to catch a, catch a game offensively where he's, where he's really, really good at that end as a leader and defensively with his toughness, he's been tremendous that way, but you know, we, you know, we, we, we need, uh, we need those guys next to James on the perimeter. And I like the way Tyler's shooting the ball coming in. He's had his best couple of days of practice, um, you know, and, and we're desperate to get a Dama going. Any other questions guys? Anybody else? Max, are you all set? Bill, I've got one. Hey, Charlotte, go ahead. Just a uh, hi, Dan. Happy New Year. <laughs> Sorry about Happy that. Happy New Year, Charlotte. Get the um, to 
follow up on Adama, what have you done, I guess, maybe over the last couple practices just to try and get him a little bit more comfortable or help him? Is he starting to kind of realize, I know you said he struggled a little bit with that adjustment to Big East play, um, yeah. but just get him a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, but, you know, the, obviously all the time he's missed his freshman hurt. Plus he's a kid that reclassified up too. So, um, you know, he had another year high school, which he, so he classed up and then uh, was given <laughs> not a lot of uh, opportunity to prepare for the season. So, um, you know, it, more conversations with him about, you know, just um, he's a perfectionist in everything he does uh, as a student, as an athlete. Um, you know, he's just the ultimate perfectionist. So, you know, just try to be easier on yourself. Um, just be physical and, and uh, um, you know, and, and be a, you know, be a monster in the paint and, uh, and play your game, but try to smile more, try to find a way to relax. He wants to do so well, so bad that, um, you know, I think he's, uh, you know, he's becoming a little frozen that way. Uh, so we just got to, Got to just find ways to get him enough minutes uh, while still, you know, obviously not compromising our ability to win because, uh, you know, he still has things he's got to learn at both ends.